Wow, praise God. Yeah, we so a lot of events, make sure you get it in the back because everything's listed uh, for you on what's going on and uh, it's and it's on the website, yeah. And uh, it's every weekend we're, we're going. Um, and also even um, when, um, remember this year Christmas is on a Sunday. So if you guys celebrate Christmas Eve, there's still church, yeah. And, and same thing with New Year's, which we pray in the New Year's, and then that Sunday is New Year's Day, and we will be here. So that's a, get your naps in. Get your naps in. Oh, when? The first? A New Year baby? Oh. I heard your husband was there yesterday. Yeah, I missed I missed seeing you guys. Maybe your birthday. It's on tape. Praise God. Wow. All right. Um okay, so you got the that all done. That's done. <laughs> what are we gonna do, George? George gives me seed thoughts in the week. Wow, praise God. Praise his name, amen, amen, amen. Wow. All right, let's, um, <clears throat> let me just pray again, um, and then we'll get into the word. Thank you, Father, that you have chose us to hear your word today. You have called us to this place today to hear from God, to hear your word, and to be built up and to be edified by what we hear, to be encouraged by what we receive, by grace, by faith and grace, and, and to be able to apply it, to be, a, to be able to apply in our life what we hear and what we receive. And uh, you are faithful. You are faithful. Let not this time pass through in such a quick manner that we do not recognize and realize the birth of our Lord and Savior. He came to die. He came to give himself, he gave himself that we may have life and have life eternal. It's not, this is just not a social gathering. This is the the, the place where God speaks to his people precisely and individually, in particular, personal, loving and kindness and the gentleness of God and the spirit of God that moves that we are able to receive and hear and mix what we hear with faith and, and then a, an amazing change within our heart because of the word of God. That word is powerful. We have a living God we have a living God in Jesus' name, amen. So many people come to church to hear a message, but it's from a dead, a dead Bible, a, a dead word. There's, there's no life to it. There's nothing that's given to it. And, and as I was thinking of a message this week, um, and I'll probably carry this into next week, um, you know, I'm thinking about the word uh, joy, the, the word joy. And do you have great joy? Do you have a joy within your heart? So many times we see um, believers walking around even miserable. <laughs> I mean, frowning and moping. And, 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 and it's because some of these things steal our joy. Circumstances and situations in life steal what God has given you freely. And so now I'm too preoccupied of, of the problem and I miss the gift or I miss the Spirit of God and I miss joy within my heart because that's where it's deposited. So can you receive that you can give because joy is a fruit of the Spirit? Um, I was going through this. I'm going to go through a couple of stories here today. Um, let, and even... 
starting in Nehemiah, and, and we don't have to go, really go, well, you can go to this verse. It's verse 10, and the last part of it, it says, the, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. What is Nehemiah speaking to here, or, or even Ezra? Because um, uh, they're, they're out of exile, Exile put them in captivity, kept them in bondage, put them in a lifestyle of depression and worry and fear. And this is what they were living for so long. And, and sometimes when you live in situations for that long, you don't know what joy is. You don't understand even the presence of God. So God speaks to Ezra and he says, get the book and open the book. Uh, right prior to that, though, he said, um, let the men build build a pulpit. And, and I think of what was built this week by uh, Brian and Chris. They built this, and check it out when you go there. It's amazing. It's going to be now. It's, it's going to be here. And they built the cross, and um, they built a, a pulpit, and, and Ezra opened up that book. He opened up the book and um, because he knew that it, it was only going to be the word of God that can change. It can't change the situation. That already took place. And some of us have gone through difficult times in life and those situations have taken place. And, and, there, and sometimes they become a part of us. And sometimes we can't shake it. Because it's always in our mind, in our memory. So this became a very important word that Ezra would teach that day. And, 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 and as he began to speak, the Bible says that God opened up their understanding. And if it wasn't for that, would anything get in? If God doesn't open up our understanding, does anything get into our hearts? Can anything? And, and I would probably argue that it, it can't. And so this is why the New Testament puts a great emphasis on hearing the word of God. Not with outer ears, but with spiritual ears. And with a humbled heart. And a open heart. And let God open up your spirit to allow that word of God to do something miraculously as a miracle. In your life, this is the word of God. And Ezra spoke it with authority. And it said that God opened up their understanding. That they will be able to not just hear it, but to be able to receive it with, with great wisdom and, and a pure understanding. Because this word is for me. This word is for you. This word is for the body here in Miami. And as he spoke... It says, listen, he said, he told them, he said um, that this day, the day that you're hearing this word today, it is, it is holy. Amen. It is set apart, a certain day set apart for you to hear something different, not just, not just a, a rah-rah charge message where you feel a little tingle in you and you feel okay for a little bit, but a word that's going to do a, a, a transformation that is going to be with you the rest of your life. And this is what this word it did uh, was sent. And he said, listen, we understand you came out of bondage. You came out of trials. You came out of difficulties. You, we, you were wounded at this time, but it was all done by God to bring you to him. And now... And now, the Lord will be your strength. That's amazing. The joy of the Lord will be your strength. This is, it means that this joy we're going to, to receive, and this word strength, by the way, and, and the way it's written here, is, is your refuge, your high tower, your hiding place. And, and it talks about not physical strength, but strength that is given to you as a gift by God and um, for an intention to be able to share. 
What we receive is given to us that we may share. Um, Joy is contagious. Joy should be shared. Joy should be given with one another. And, 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 And you think about this. So the... You know, as individual believers, we should have joy. The body of Christ should have joy. The pastor should have joy. We need joy within within our lives. Joy should be in your family. And um, <laughs> so, um, let's let's cover a couple of things here. A couple of you know, you think of all of our Christmas songs that contain. The word, you know, like joy to the world. You know, the Lord has come. I mean, there's amazing songs uh, with the word joy in it. And, um, and we hear them, but do we have it? Do we have it as a gift that overrides my feelings? Because your feelings are going to come against you and say, You don't deserve to be joyous. Look what you went through or look what happened or look what took place. And now we're going there and we're forgetting what God's telling us to have. And it's so easy to do that. But our minds must be changed to believe the word that it is holy and it is set apart and it's for this time. Turn in your Bibles. Let's start here in in Hebrews chapter 12. And I'm just going to go through a couple of these things. 12, 1, it says, um, You are compassed with such a great cloud of witnesses. And um, that word, um, um, that word compassed here means you are surrounded. You are surrounded in your life by a cloud of witnesses. What is that? What does that mean? That I am surrounded by a cloud of witnesses in my life. These are talking about the great people of faith that went before us. It's all explained in Hebrews 11. So, In Hebrews 11, it talks about all these men and women of great faith. Did they have problems? A lot of them. (laughs) A lot of them. But they were still men and women of faith. They learned to get beyond all of that and go with God and believe God and trust God. And so this, this group that surrounds us are watching us. And cheering us on and praying and not praying, but but you know, saying, Hey, you can win this race. You can run the race with faith. You can do it too. Don't give up. Lay aside every weight that easily beseeches you. And and what that means, that word beseech means it ensnares you. You are being ensnared by things of this world, and they're stopping you from running the race. They're preventing you. They're, they're, they're wearing you down as you go. They're wearing you down, and when you get wore down and you don't get refilled, you get wore out. So it's wearing you down, and it's wearing you out. This, this is what the world systems, and it, these are ensnares, little traps that are sent before you. And, and Paul is saying, lay that aside. Get rid of that stuff. It's a weight on you. How do you run a race with this this weight upon your shoulders? It's slowing you down. It's dragging you down. It's defeating you. It's causing you to faint and give up and quit and, and stop. I'd rather quit and stop and give up than continue because it's too heavy. Well, Paul's saying, well, lay it aside then. Get rid of that garbage. Get rid of that sin in your life that easily ensnares you because that's what it does. It, it, it might be a, a, a short-term fix. It might be a short-term uh, uh, you know, thing that satisfies, but it's a lie. Sin is a lie. There is no goodness or f- fruit that comes from it. And then learn to run the race with patience, 
that is set before you. We are all in this race, and we have a cloud of witnesses cheering us on to continue, to don't give up. You know, it's, it seems like sometimes it's easy just to give up. You know, let me just throw it all. I'm, I'm done with everything. And, and, um, but, but there is none of that here. And, and the encouragement that we get from the Bible it becomes amazing. So we are to number two, we are to look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. You know, and run that race. And to don't give up, but to look unto Jesus. He is the author. He is the beginning of your faith. If you've accepted Christ as your Savior, at that moment, the Holy Spirit came to abide within you. And God deposited the Holy Spirit within your life. And he also gave you a measure of faith to believe. At that moment, you said yes to Christ. You said yes to him, and he came and abided in you. That is the off, That is the beginning of your faith. And now, as you go, you get little. You get you. Uh, you start to hear the word of God, and you mix faith with what you hear, and 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 faith comes by that hearing. So fa- you're growing now in faith. You're now walking in faith. You're believing it. Um, and then there's the finisher. Uh, of our faith. You will not need faith when you're in heaven. We need it here. <laughs> we we don't need it then. So there is an end to this faith, but think of it this way because it's a race that Jesus Christ is just waiting with open arms as you're coming towards him. You're coming towards that finish line and you've walked by faith. We it's all that we have to believe in God is is faith that he gives us. Even if you don't think you have enough or a lot, you have a little, and a little's enough. You know, and 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 this is so. He's the author and the finisher of that faith. And then it says, um, and then it says, who for the joy that was set before him. Joy was set before Christ. This amazing joy. And um, it was, and he endured the cross, and he despised the shame, and then he sat down at the right hand of the Father, and that means it is finished. He, when he sits down, you sit to rest, and you sit in the finished work. But think of this: the cross of Jesus Christ was joy. How how do how do you get how do you how do we see that that this this cross that he was going to he would he would make that joy it wasn't the cross itself it was the cross that was set before him so as he's going he's seeing this cross but then there's this joy that's there there's a joy that came with him going to the cross. And that joy was you. You're the joy of Jesus Christ. Joy, Jesus Christ had joy because of what that cross would mean. And it would mean he would pay for the sins of the world. And that became joy. The the cross wasn't joyful. That wasn't a that would be that would be a very, very difficult experience. It would it would be a crushing experience experience to anyone that would have to go through that completely crushed and then the shame that went with that cross the shame of the thorn of uh, a cross uh, of um, what is it called crown that would be put upon his head the shame of the beating and the whipping and the tearing open of his back just 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 beaten beaten and, and the mocking and the spitting and the ridiculing and everything else that went all with that shame and all with that cross. And he still did it with joy. Not one complaint. Not one saying, oh, I can't do this. No, nothing. Nothing like that. 
Because his eyes weren't on that, his eyes were on you. And that was the joy that was set before him. And he finished the work, and he finished it. Great joy Christ had. Great joy. Let's, uh, let's turn in your... And by the way, when we are going through then a trial, or we have something that is in front of us that is causing us a lot of pain and misery and frustration... We too cannot look and gaze too much at that. We can't be preoccupied with what we're going through and the situations we're going through. But instead, we can also look and, and, um, and, and see this joy. We can have joy set before us also. And our joy will be Him. So we don't need to look and be overwhelmed by every single situation that happens in our lives that is there to just beat you down. But you can have great joy even in the trial. Look at, uh, let's turn to uh, Luke chapter 10. Luke 10. And this is, uh, in Luke 10, it's the story where Jesus sends out the 70. He sends out 70, sends them forth to, to teach the good news of the kingdom of God. If they're going two by two, that's 35 groups. Boy, what an evangelistic team. 35 groups of going out into the neighborhoods and preaching the good news of Christ. Wow. Verse 17, and when they returned, so they went out, and now they're coming back because they have a report. They have something that happened. They want to tell Jesus what happened, what took place on this time. And it says, and they returned with joy. They had this amazing joy when they returned, saying, even the devils and the demons are subject to your name. That was the joy. We can't believe it. God, we went out not knowing what to expect, not knowing what is going to happen, not knowing what we're going to go to. But when we came back, we found out that the demons are subject to your name. Now look, look what Jesus says here. He said, and he said to them, Behold, I saw Satan fall as lightning. That's his response. To the great joy that they had, he said, Behold, Satan as lightning fell from heaven. Now, this comes in two areas. You can, you can find it and read upon it. I'm not going to go over it. You can read these two areas. One of them is in Isaiah 14, 12. And the other one is in Revelations chapter 12. So you got that? Take your notes. Don't count on your memory. Because that will be gone by the time you get out of here. Just, just is. So Isaiah fourteen twelve, Revelation Revelations twelve ten says, and there was a war in heaven. Isn't that amazing? A war in heaven. This is it. This is the war. Somebody got the boot. Somebody didn't last. And then look at nineteen. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions over the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. Now look at verse 20. Notwithstanding in this rejoice, in other words, don't rejoice that demons are subject to my name. You're, you're having joy over the wrong thing. And sometimes we love, when something goes on and we see God's moving, we want to have great joy in that. Wow, look what I've seen. Look what God did. And, and, and I'm rejoicing in the circumstance. You know, there was one time, this was, um, boy, we're going way back. It's uh, <laughs> probably some 20 years now. And um, I, I worked for GE at the time. And um, and um, one of the clients that I ran into, 
She says, I've got a friend, you need to call her. Her daughter is demon-possessed. And uh, I said, oh, okay here, let's, let's see what this is about. Um, never go by yourself. Take somebody who is strong in the faith with you, okay? And um, so me and a, another believer of mine, we went, and, um, and this was uh, one strange time. This was, this was really something, and it was a demon. There was no doubt about it in this little girl. And it was sad to see, but some of the things she did was, it was demon possession. There's no doubt about it. And, and things that took place within that household, the time that we got there till the time we left was really something, you know. Um, I don't know what uh, her situation is today, but that was an amazing time and we left with a lot of joy and spoke about that often and really if you think about it it was we shouldn't have, I mean that's a wonderful thing deliverance but there's something greater see we get caught up in the circumstances and the situations and the events and we want to see these little things happen in our life but there's something so greater and, and, and look, look at the verse don't rejoice in that don't rejoice in that. Rather, instead of rejoicing in the circumstance, and why don't we rejoice in the circumstance? Anybody? You can talk back. You might cast it out one time, you might not the next time. Even though you've got power. Okay, let me give you some verses. So, um, Mark 9. Um, um, you don't have to go there. Uh, Matthew 17. Remember, they, they brought, the guy brought his demon-possessed son to the disciples and said, Lord, we brought him, and they couldn't do nothing. And, and what does Jesus say? Oh, oh, little faith. You know, that's how he responds to it. And then, um, and, and this translation is a little different, so... You can take it whatever way you want. It says this type only comes out by prayer and fasting. But that's in one, but it's not in the other. So I don't know if it's in the original or not. It is in the original on the Mark side, but Matthew seems to omit it. Uh, prayer and fasting, I mean. So just just saying. So you can study that for your, yourself on that. But, um, but yeah, yeah. Um, and then, and then even with Paul, you know, with the seven sons of Sceva, you know, Paul I know, Jesus I know, but who are you, <laughs> you know? And uh, so, um, see, so he, he says, don't rejoice in that because it's just an experience, But instead, rejoice that your name is written in heaven. Wow. You want to see a bigger miracle? See, we love to see little, little things and God use us. But the biggest miracle is you being saved. God saved you. Come on. Have you looked at yourself? I mean, have you seen yourself? Uh, God saved you. That's in, that, what a miracle. You know, because we were enemies with God and he brought you to himself. So don't rejoice in the situation. Rejoice in the eternal. That is just a temporal thing. What, 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 rejoice that your name's written in heaven means you've accepted Christ. That's an eternal thing. We're, we need to rejoice in the eternal things, not the temporal things. We don't want to rejoice in the experimental things. We want to rejoice in what is solid and true and, and written in heaven where God has done this for you. All right? So, wow. I mean, don't, I mean, hey, we went, I remember that time we went home all the, all the way home rejoicing. But again, I mean, I, I love how that is written. Um, all right, let's. Let's go one more here. Turn to First uh, Peter. I 
Let me give you a little background in uh, 1 Peter. Um, the Christians and the believers were scattered. And think about this. Because you know what? It could happen. There could be a time one day that everybody in this room is scattered. No more body, no more unity, no more body of Christ, no more wraps with food. It could. could easily happen. It happened here. This was the church. And um, all of a sudden, um, Nero, who, and this is around 65 AD, Nero sets fire to all of Rome. The, he burned it because he wanted to build it bigger. But he had to put, he couldn't do that without putting the blame on somebody. And the Christians are always a good blame. Just blame them. If it wasn't for them, you know. So he blames the Christians and they disperse because everybody's now after them. And, um, and, and Paul will go into this and say, and listen, the temporal has been destroyed, but, but you have an inheritance that is incorruptible and undefiled and will never fade away. This here, this church here could fade away. But what has been spoken unto you, the words that have been spoken to you will be eternal, incorruptible, and undefiled. Things in this world could be polluted and corrupted and fade away. But what God has done in your life is incorruptible and is permanent and is sound. And, uh, and he starts there with them, and, and then he tells them in verse 5 that they are kept by God. And that's, that's great news for us today. You know, I can't keep myself. Boy, I've, I've, I've brought in great problems in my life trying to do that. You know? But God keeps you. And he keeps you all the way through to salvation. Those that believe that they can keep themselves will stand before God and give an account of why they think so <laughs> to the one that can only keep them. <laughs> so, verse 6 is where I want to start this. It says, now look at this. So, that's the background. And they're scattered. And they're in fear in ver their lives. And, and, and there's great problems and there's great persecution and there's great setback. And, um, and he says, within that, greatly rejoice. It's hard to rejoice in, in times of great frustration and great pain and great difficulties that I'm going through. And, and look how Paul says this. Greatly rejoice first because it's only for a season. What you're going through is only a short time. Even if it's five, six, seven, ten, twenty years. <laughs> it's only a season compared to eternity. Compare your trouble and your problem through something greater. It doesn't look that big. It doesn't look that long. And then, so it's only for a season. And then look, if need be, you are in heaviness through the manifold temptations. Okay, so some of us live in great heaviness. And because of the heaviness, we can't, rejoice or we forgot how to or we can't even muster it up because it's too heavy you understand we 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 have this heaviness within us and we've learned to make it a part of my life we've embraced it 
I, I live in it now. Because at once it caused me great pain. One time in the past it caused me a lot of pain and a lot of anxiety. I would even live in fear if I were to get rid of it. <laughs> I don't even know how to get rid of it, but if, it, if I got rid of it, I, I wouldn't even know how to live because I've lived with it for so long. This is the heaviness and the weight that's upon some individuals. And because of that, they lost all joy. It says, through the manifold temptations. These problems, these situations are through manifold temptations. The word manifold, Peter loves this word, by the way. He uses it, I think, three times in this, maybe some in 2 Timothy, but I think it's all here. But um, he talks about the manifold wisdom. He talks about the manifold grace, and now it's the manifold temptations. It means the many sides. It means temptation is all around me. My trial, my problem has covered me. It's all around me. Wherein you greatly rejoice. I can't. You can. Rejoicing is not like happiness where you're happy one time and not the next because of the situation. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit that abides within you. The word is incredible. Over 40 times, I do believe, in the New Testament. So there's a point to it. The word is charis, charis. It's the same word as grace. That's the same word for, it's, 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 it's a root word of grace. It means um, God has given it to you as a gift, undeserving. Joy is undeserving gift of God that we can live in. And he gives this gift for a purpose to share. Can you share your joy? Can you share joy that's been given to you as when you were saved? So look at this. Let me read the rest of this here. So you got these many manifold temptations all around us, and he says greatly rejoice in them. And then he talks about the, in seven, the trial of your faith is more precious than gold that perishes or worldly things that perish. And if it's tried by fire, it'll be used to, uh, to praise the glory of God with and to honor him. And then look at this until the appearing of Christ. Verse eight, whom, whom having you not seen you love, and whom you have not, have, have not seen you believe. So you have not seen Christ. By the way, some believe they still do. I read that the other day. But you don't see him, but you love him. And you love him because he first loved you. You don't even have, you don't even know how to love God unless he starts to reveal that to us beautifully through his son with the first expressions of what he did by dying on the cross. He proved his love by dying on the cross. Here, let me demonstrate how much I love you. And he died on the cross. Why do you think he did that? <laughs> because there was joy set before him, but because he loves you. What an amazing love. What an amazing love. So we love him because he first loved us, so, but we didn't see him. And we don't see him, yet we believe. And that's what great faith is. Believing in what you don't see and trusting in God who you don't see. It becomes a little difficult to be able to trust God in every situation of your life because he knows you better than you know you. 
So because of all that, because, because you love him and because you believe in him, rejoice with joy. Look at that. Look at the next verse. See that? Where are we at? You believe, yet rejoice with joy. Unspeakable and full of glory. This joy that he gives you is unspeakable. I'm trying to speak, like that one guy, I'm trying to speak on this and I can't even define it. It's unspeakable. God's joy within you is unspeakable. It, do, it doesn't make sense why God would give us this abundance of joy in a time of hardship and pain. It's unspeakable, and it's full of the glory of God. Bless people. Show them joy. They, they need joy today. Go outside. We had a... Uh, what was that called? Christmas parade or whatever? There wasn't too much Christmas stuff there. Just a bunch of lights, but nothing resembling the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Except for, yeah, except for us. And they walk around and they pretend to be happy and they pretend to have joy until they get alone by themselves and they're miserable. And they're being eaten up inside by guilt and failure and condemnation. And they're eaten up by things that don't go their way. Are you a type of person that had better go your way or you're going to put the wrath of God on people? Or can you forgive them, Father, they know not what they do? Do you have joy that's unspeakable? Do you have a joy that's abundance, that's overflowing to those in need? Just a smile. Just a, just a welcome. The world is craving for it. The world is dying without it. They are lost without this joy. The glory of God the, the presence of, the, of God born as a, as a child full of the glory of God. It's shown all around him. Share joy. Share joy this time of year. People need it. They're lost. They're lost. People are hurting. They're in pain. They need the love of God. Amen? Amen? Heavenly Father, we just thank you. Lord, we just praise you. We bless your name. Joy to the world. The King has come. Let earth receive her King. Maybe there's somebody here that... Uh, has never accepted Christ, doesn't know that, the, that he died on the cross for you personally. And that was joy to him. Just believe in God. Accept him in your heart. Say, Jesus, I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. And then give me the Holy Spirit. The abundance of Christ, the glory of God, the joy that's unspeakable. Receive the joy today. Receive his joy. Ask for joy. Ask, ask of God and, and you will receive. Just believe in God. Lord, bless the offering. We thank you. And, um, and our wrap next door, Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your joy. Thank you for your joy. Thank you for love and joy. And thank you for this peace that settles in our heart. We love you. We thank you. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God.